Big Mike here with Caesar Damon and Coach Corner. This episode, we got UFC fighter from England, Chris Fishgold, fighting in the featherweight division with an 18-4-1 record. Here we go. If you like what we're doing, you hit the subscribe button. If you're looking for a mug, perhaps a hoodie, head on over to IonlyTouchGreatness.com. My name's Chris Fishgold, the fight in the UFC featherweight division, and I'm coming on I Only Touch Greatness podcast. We're the best, just like Dallas says, we're the best. I make cats run like DMC My boy gets saved, it's the ENT On a track, I blow like TNT Hot boys like CMB Girls spend the night like a BMB. I say what I want, I want what I say Remain at the top, I'm the top of the game the top Step the back, game. I come up quick fast So fast when I stop, y'all get whiplash So what you wanna say today? Hate the game, dog. I'm the ace of spades I call player, bet it's not over are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Yes, what's going on here? One second, brother. Um... Hey, th- thanks for being early and on time. Nah, always, always. Um, you good anyway? Yeah, we're good. I'm Ryan. How are you? By the way. I'm Ryan, and this is Big Ma- Mike. Big Mike. Uh, and our nice to Paul. meet you. Nice to meet you. You all good though, yeah? Yeah, yeah we're all good. Like in the, uh, the festive spirit there. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's uh, Copes right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just going to ask you a bunch of questions, obviously. Uh, you grew up in uh, Liverpool. What was life like growing up? Um, I'd say um, probably the same as most other um, kids in Liverpool. You know, um, pretty, pretty much not, nothing to do with, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's only really sports that you're going to do. You either go down the fighting routes. We've got a massive um, boxing, um, boxing and the MMA scene. Now, obviously, um, we've always had a massive boxing scene. Um, the MMA scene starting to come through, and if it's not that, you play footy. Um, apart from that, if you don't play footy, you're normally a little bastard. So, what I mean, you're one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into fighting in the first place, and uh, when did it start? Yeah, well, to, to be honest, um, now gr- growing up for me, it was. Um, like good, good childhood, good dad, lots of friends. You know, we used to go out every day, and it was sort of. But as um, school started to go on, and um, I started to get a little bit older, you know, I was finishing school, going out all day, and just hanging around doing nothing, you know, till late at night. And I think it was just before I left school, my mate said to me, um, oh, "I'm going to Thai boxing today," and he said, "Do you want to come?" And I went, "Say, so, yeah, go out, crew." Um, ended up going there. And there was guys on the floor, like, choking each other out after it. And I, I'd never seen that before. So I said <laughs> to him, do you want to stay and do that? And he was like, yeah. And then, you know, after after that, I fell in love with it straight away. Um, started going every night. I think we might stopped after going three more times. And, you know, that's, that's been me for the past 14 years or something every day. Okay, you made the right choice. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So there was times when I thought there was ups and downs and um, I questioned what I was doing and, you know, it's, I had a year away from the sport with him. Um, I, I told everyone I'd never fight again. I was 10-0 and, oh, and it took me a move to Thailand to get me life back on track and the love back fighting. Okay. If you could, sit, up, if you, if you could sit down with anyone for dinner, who would it be? If I could what? Sit down for dinner with anybody, who could it be? Ah, oh, it's a hard one, that you know. <laughs> um, in, t- in terms of in terms of fighting, or anything. no, it could be anything, anything, anybody. Um, 
So I've I've never re- I've never really thought thought about that, you know. Um, I don't know. Pro- so what's mad? It probably would be GSP or something like that, or Matthews. You know, they they the two guys that when I was first getting into the sport, I um, especially Matthews, I really looked up to him as a fighter. You know, he, he never had the best hands, and he'd go in there and fuck people up just with his wrestling. And you know, I read his book and his story and everything. And he, obviously, he's a hall of famer, isn't he? So. Yeah, um, I, I you know I say to kids now in the gym or to, to like tell stories about. Do you remember this fight, Matthews? And like, who the fuck's Matthews? And it's like, ah, oh, you just don't even know. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Two yeah. youngins, yeah, that's right. That that's yeah. our age group. Like, we just uh, the last couple of weeks we've interviewed uh, like Carlos Condit and uh, Kenny Florian, Pat Cote, uh, like those big names, and uh, those are the guys like we watched growing up. Chris Lee, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, f- funny enough, um, J- Jens Pulver, he, um, he he commentated on one of my earlier fights in in London. Oh wow! And like um, a, a lot, a lot of the like a lot of like younger lads, and I know I'm, um, I'm I'm still quite young, but a lot of the younger lads never even knew who he was. So wow, he's I, a legend. I like, yeah, I was like, oh my god, Jens, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, and he was like, oh, well, I'm a big fan of yours, and so that was that was a great a great moment for me. So what I mean. He is. He's one of one of um, one of the what's it called? The, like the foundations for the sport. Or what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Copes. Yeah. Well, that kind of led into my question. Was going to be talking about your uh, kind of influence and stuff. I mean, you look at the pioneers that have come out of England. You go with, of course, Michael Bisbing, Dan Hardy, Ross Pearson, um, and now recently Darren Till, slightly before you, and now you're coming in. Um, what have you learned from these guys in terms of being a step forward for English MMA in the past few years? And what can fans expect from you uh, moving forward? Um, to, well, to be honest, um, Mike, Mike Bisping and uh, Dan Hardy are good friends of mine. But um, I'd, say, I'd say more so, um, I'd like the way um, Dan and Mike carry themselves, you know, the... the proud to be representing the country and I'd say more so than Hardy you know he's, he's in the cage he's a fighter in the cage he's a champ out of the cage he's a champ to get what I mean um, yeah it's that it's that humble humble all times and you know all right it might pay to get to be loud and you know chat shit and stuff but you know, if you, if, you, if you had a kid now, if I had a kid, and it's like, you pick who you want your kids to grow up like, it's not going to be one of them guys, you know. You need to be a role model, don't you? If it's going to be someone like Dan Hardy, so someone like GSP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's pretty uh, much it. Be, be uh, humble, always be humble. Yeah, Bisbing is a beauty. We've been, I've been a big fan of his for a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, to be fair, he's a, he's a, good, he's a good guy, I think, him. Um, on Fight Island the other month for him, I, I seen him and I, was, I went over and was like, you're right. he was getting his air cut and I was like, you're all right, Mike? And he was like, yeah, I'm signed there. I said, can you, do us a favor, can you sign this t-shirt? I want to do this for charity. He was cool. We were speaking for a bit and stuff, but um, yeah, the, the fair, first um, English champ, you've, you've got to, uh, you've got to take your hat off for that. Yeah, of course, of course. What's your favorite strike and what's your favorite submission? Um, my favorite what? Strike and your favorite yeah. submission. Uh, my favorite strike's got to be my overhand right. Um, I think I threw that in almost every fight. I rock castle with that, Joe. What I mean? And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I think my favorite submission's got to be a guillotine. I think I finished eleven people with guillotine. So they're def- that's definitely, your go-to. Def- definitely them too. You come in with that big overhand right, and you know people either take it on the chin or they, they shit themselves and try and take you down, and you know it sets up the guillotine. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That, that, that's, that's, most, that's most of me fights. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, that's perfect. Who's your tough, toughest opponent thus far in your career so far? Um, you know what? That, that, that's an odd, odd question, to be fair. Um, I, I would, you know what's mad? I, I, got, like, I got quite fucked up when I fought Cutter. Um, I think I broke my nose. Um, I had a bad cut to the eye and I, I broke my foot off leg kicking him like quite Ouch. bad. I can send you the pic- I can send you the pictures over that boy. Um, to be fair, I wouldn't say that was like a tough opponent. I I just I'd say I gassed out and you know I got caught with the with a shot to the back of the head. Um, but apart from that, 
you know, I was winning that fight right up until that Yeah, I point. thought you were too. That was a good fight. Yeah, yeah I think, um, to be honest, my toughest one was probably my last fight. And, you know, no disrespect to Jared, but that's a guy who really I should have run through, on paper I should have run through him. But um, I fucked my weight cut up. I, that was the first time in 25 pro fights I missed weight. And uh, I fucked my weight cut up. I ended up killing myself. I think I got... I think the last 14 hours I've done like eight or eight key. And um, wow. yeah, and I just I could feel it in the fight. I was still pissing him um, like yellow clip like can't couldn't even see it. Pure yellow, like a luminous about ten minutes <laughs> before the fight. And oh, I, I think I turned to my coach and said that I don't feel good here. And he was like, You'll be sad once you get in there. And you know, that's the first time I've ever felt like that. And two minutes in uh, a minute in I felt sad, and the minute I got took tucked down. You know, I'm a, I'm a black belt on the ground and literally the only thing I had energy to do was lie in guard and slap the side of his head. That was it. And like, I never had, I couldn't, I never even had the energy to set up iron bars, do anything, try and get up. I was just done. I knew I was done. And um, I, obviously it was the weight cut, um, but that still lies on myself. That's still part of the game, do you know what I mean? So um, it's one of them. It, it taught me a lesson so for going forward in the future. Um, the only good thing that's from, well, not good thing about losing, but because it was literally people have like people have seen me fight. They know what I could do when I fight. Um, of course, everybody said, "Look, that was not him." I think Jared even come up after it and went, "Bro, I know. I never thought. I never thought the re- real you then, and just shook me hand." And I was, I just said, "Congratulations." You know what I mean? You'll never take a win away from anyone. So. Um, but I'd say that was probably my toughest, knowing what I'm capable of and um, be, be, being there and knowing what I, I should do, but just not having the energy to do it. That's a crazy fucking feeling, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Just just cover, cover and uh, pray, cover, slap and pray. <laughs> <laughs> if you were an animal, what would you be? Oh, I don't know, you know. Um, it's it's a hard one. Um, probably, probably um, at the moment a turtle, just nice and chilled. You know what I mean? Nice and chilled. <laughs> go at me, go at me own pace and just that's it. You know what I mean? Okay. I was waiting to hear Oops. the English bulldog. <laughs> no, no, no. I wait. Do you know what? If it was it was in a fight camp, I'd probably be saying a pit bull or something like that. But no, at at the moment, you know, I'm in my house. Um, it's a it's a Saturday night. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask me, ask me tomorrow after after I finish training. I'll probably say you're fucking a lion or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Copes. So, uh, very successful re- uh, career so far. A couple of a uh, couple of title defenses um, with um, Cage Warriors. Um, you're you're coming off two hard hard fought losses, one by decision and one by submission. But you've shown the ability to beat experienced guys and come in and go on one hell of a streak. First going ten and zero, then I believe it was seven and one after that. What yeah, can yeah. fans expect from you moving forward to kind of get back in that win column and get back on that Chris uh, Fishgold train? Um, literally, look, Jojo, um, going forward, um, like I, I made a lot of mis- like a couple of mistakes in my last fights. The mainly the the. Carter won hands off to him. Carter's a beast, you know what I mean? He'll be the next champion. Um, but still, that one was my card, you know. Obviously, I had the first, you know, my debut jitters, but not so much that. The, the loss that pissed me off more than anyone out of the four losses has got to be um, the Mach 1 fight. Because I, I literally, you know, I was fucking, like, I never done nothing wrong that fight. I was up two rounds, in my opinion. I never yeah. took one, one punch at all. Um, I got kicked in the balls once, and then, you know, I'm, I lost the, um, I lost what's it called? I switched off for two seconds on the ground, and I got caught with that dice. And then after it, like I was speaking to him backstage, and I could see all lumps and shit on his head, and I was like, wow, I don't even feel like I've been in a fight. I can't believe I've just lost. So that, yeah, you that did, you did some off. damage in that one. Yeah, that 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 pissed me off, bro. Like. It's a, do you know what? If, if, I've, if I've ever lost and I've, like, I'm caught and I'm bruised, then I can take it. But, you know, there's nothing worse than looking like, you know, fucking, you've just woke up in the morning and someone's saying, oh, did you win? And it's like, nah, bro, I lost. 
Like, oh, you don't look like you've lost. I've been saying, no, that's what Pit Joe what I mean. Yeah. When, when, you're not tr- when you're not training, uh, do you have a drink that you like? What kind of drink do you like? JD and Coke. JD and Coke. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah, yeah that's it. No, don't watch him. Um, always, to be honest, I don't drink much uh, beer. Um, when I, I don't drink all the time, but when I do drink, it's, it's always spirits. It's always uh, either the um, whiskey or vodka. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I like the vodka, so. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, what happened with the fight? Here? You ever come here? We know to drink as well in England. Yeah, you do. Just, just like the Scots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what happened with the fight with you and uh, Billy Quarantilo? I know it got cancelled or something. Oh uh, yeah. So, to be honest, I, someone messaged me a little bit of shit about that, and I was like, I said, um, I messaged him back, and he was like, oh, something like, what was it? I think it might have been one of Billy's friends or someone, or it was like. Did that get pulled because of something about you side? It was something like that someone said. And what? Like, oh. So that's what someone messaged me, and I was like, fuck, you're having a laugh, aren't you? I said, um, never in a million years would a fight get pulled because of that with me. And it was because... Um, so basically, I'd, I'd applied for my visa, and yeah. the, there was so, so, someone filled my, my visa thing, my Esther out for me, and... Um, they, they put something wrong, so basically when I come back, they said, all right, you're going to need to go to the U.S. Embassy for six weeks uh-huh. um, to do things, to, to do interviews or something like that. And so I kept on going. Then um, eventually they said, look, um, you've passed everything. We'll give you an unconditional visa or something like that um, just for this once, for like any time you fight, just to go and come straight back. And um, I was like, cool. And he said, um, at the time, they never knew. So, so they pulled me. To, to, when I when I last went, they said it could take up to six months to come back. And I was like, I fight in four weeks. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, so, so the UFC pulled me off three weeks before. Um, but basically, so they could still get Billy a fight. Um, oh. just, in case, just in case it never come back. And so you know what it was a good it was a good move by them because I got any uh, I got a letter or an email was it about four months after the the show saying your visa has now been denied as the date of the event has now passed so you know it was uh, it was probably a good good thing by them but I know I can, I know I can fight in America um, I just need to start that process a little bit earlier next time to get the visa yeah yeah yeah. How, yeah. how was it fighting on uh, Fight Island? How, how was that experience? Oh, bro, it was fucking hot, you know. It was hot. It was hot, yeah. Um, for, I think that the lowest temperature the at night... I think the lowest temperature at night was something like it was 35 degrees or something like that. Uh, in the daytime, it was going to like f- f- mid-40s. Oh, You know, um, that, that's... A, I spent that, some time in Israel, so I know all about that. Oh, bro, look, t- 10 minutes, 10 minutes outside of, um, 10 minutes outside the fucking, outside the hotel, and that was it, done, like, no energy to do absolutely anything, um, just lost too much water and everything, you just want to go back to the hotel and chill, um, you know, I know Molly and um, a couple of the guys we was with, some in my corner, they, like, had the top shot off and that, and we're loving it, and that, that like, Nah, that was too hot. I had me top on, shades on, fucking factor two hundred, and just you know, I was just damn. Um, yeah, that that I, I I spent most of the time in my hotel room because of that. Yeah, oh, okay. from Liverpool, you haven't seen anything over twenty four degrees, so yeah, yeah bro. Look, twenty degrees, honest, nineteen degrees. People are in shorts <laughs> and you know barbecues <laughs> and stuff like that. that that's pretty. That, that's our summer for you. In fact, that you're probably um, that's probably saying that like 19 degrees is probably warm. Do you know what I mean? Like we don't get much of that here. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I think it's been raised, raining now. You know, we get mostly rain, don't we? So yeah, you guys, you guys get the same kind of weather that we do in Vancouver, Canada. Anyways, like I got, I got family in Glasgow, and they tell they tell and they tell me all the time it's a lot of rain and clouds and gray sky. 
Uh, uh, yeah, well, the yeah, funny you say that, but Canada gets fucking cold, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Bro, we don't live. We don't live in igloos, though. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting this. You know, my um, you know, my first, my debut. Uh, I fought in a uh, mountain. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I, and um, that's the East Coast. Airport. Yeah, Ma- Manchester Airport. I was waving this fucking mad hat. In fact, I'll put it on in a minute for you. I was waving this mad hat. And all my corner team was buzzing off me, laughing, saying, oh, you look like a tit and everything. <laughs> Bro, we got there. After two hours, every every one of them wanted to wear this hat. <laughs> every one of them wanted to wear this. Oh, yeah. This is it. Oh, there we go. There you go. Yeah. Hey, that, that's a Canadian hat. Really, bro? We're getting this. Every, every one of them wanted to wear this hat. And uh, I was getting, I was getting, I was getting in taxis, and I was saying to the guy, um, like, uh, what, what's happening? Can you take me here? And they were looking at me, going, "Are you Russian, man?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Nah, nah." <laughs> so I was going, "Nah, I'm from Liverpool." And he was like, oh, "Like, I think I was getting Irish, Scottish, Russian." <laughs> and then, like, we finally got it. it was Liverpool. Yeah, another uh, another good UFC fighter, uh, Molly McCann. Um, you worked uh, with the nightclub with her, right? Yeah, I actually got her into the sport. You know, where um, she, she was a um, a boxer and she, she she'd won that the ABAs and stuff. I think, I'm pretty sure she did. And I said to her, "Why don't you come 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 down the gym and spy this girl who at the time was a uh, Rosie Sexton, the first English woman to get signed by the UFC?" Yeah, and. And um, she come down and spied Rosie, and pretty much that was it. She fell in love with it, and you know, it's flying now, Joe. What me? Do you still yeah, keep yeah. in contact with her? Yeah, all the people we train for the same gym, um, all the time. To be honest, all the time that hasn't changed. I've been um, in in our gen in in our gym next gen. Um, we we've I've, I've been I'm the longest student there. I've, Paul was who I started with, um, I think in 2006 or 2007. And okay. uh, I've, be, I've been there ever since. Wow. What's your favorite uh, movie? Favorite movie? Oh, that's a hard one, you know. Have you seen him? Um, it's got to be The Lone Survivor. Yeah. yeah. Blood Diamond. Oh, Great have you, movie. Have you, have, you seen, uh, six, have you seen 16 Hours? Think it of no. 13 hours? 13 hours? No, oh, no. Um, oh. It's it's a true true story about um when when Gaddafi got um took down in is it Libya, yeah? And oh in Benghazi. Yeah. In uh Benghazi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I know only, what you're talking um, about. Do you know what I mean? There was only yeah. a US a US diplomatic outpost and an undercover CIA base. And um they never had no, they can't have no military in there, so they put employ their mercenaries, and it's basically about both of these camps getting attacked, attacked on this one night, and it's six mercenaries that are defending the whole thing. It's, oh wow! Um, it's, a, it's quite a sick, sick film, to be honest. I, I'd recommend if you've got, you know, a night I'd, I'd put that on. Like other than that, though, I've, most of the time I watch horrors. You know, they're probably like the only, only free. I'll have to put that on tonight after the UFC and crush a couple of pints. Yeah, oh, bro, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. What time is it there now? Uh, right now, it's only 10 in the morning. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, it's Bailey's and coffee. Yeah, Bailey's and coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong with that, can you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so what time does what time's the UFC normally on there? Uh, uh, it starts at four, the prelims. Oh, is it? See, that's yeah. good time. You know, um, that, that's one thing I've got to say about the UK fans if if you you are fans of um MMA say mainly the UFC because it's crazy you know, you know you have MMA fans but then you have UFC fans which they don't care about any other show they just watch the UFC to get what I mean yeah and, yeah. Um, yeah so you know mainly the UFC fans if the, if the if the dedicated and you know they stay up to date with their hats off yep. because they they're staying up fucking Prelim start at like twelve a.m. one a.m. and you're staying up till six six a.m. six, 6 a.m. in the morning, Joe, to watch the main card. And you know, <laughs> the oh, UFC now, the UFC now, they haven't chose nearly every week, Joe. What I mean? So yeah, yeah, that's that's after them every weekend staying up at six a.m. You know, fucking my <laughs> I don't, my, party days, my party days, my party days, 
my partying days, I don't even think I stayed up till 6 a.m. every weekend. <laughs> 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 do, you have a, do you have a dream fight and a dream venue? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's got to be um, got got to be Vegas, hasn't it, or Madison Square Garden? Madison, okay, yeah, good choices. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think anywhere in Vegas, you know, I think um, they're doing they're doing the uh, Apex now, aren't they? Yeah. Do you have a dream even, fight? Even, even, even that'd be a dream, to be honest. Um, a dream fight. At at the moment, it'd either be Casa Machuan or fucking Jared Gordon. You know, I'm not one of them that'll just move on to somebody. You know, um, I don't let things go, and I I know eventually I will have have the chance to fight all these again. You know, I all you yeah. like, and you always got to want to revenge your losses. You know, that's why I think. Um, sorry, guys, I think like I I, I like the um, oh, what's her name, Ronda Rousey, but. Yeah. You know, she, she lost to Holly, yeah, and then she never said, oh, I want to fight Holly again. She waited till someone else was the champion and then was like, I want to fight them. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's not cool. Give it to Connor. He lost to Diaz and straight away he was like, I want to fight Diaz. You know, you've always got to revenge your losses. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I what, do you think of his, what do you think of Connor's fight coming up? You think Poirier is going to beat him? Um, it'll be good to see, you know, fucking... Money changes people. Money, money takes away hunger. You know, m- money allows you just go in there playing it safe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, that that that's it. Yeah, I, th- I think I think he's got the skills to beat him. But to be honest, in Connor's last couple of fights, people have seen holes in his games the way people have beat him. And yeah, you know, it, it, it depends. Though people don't change the style when they're winning. They, they change the style when they're losing, so we might have went back and corrected the old. You know, but I don't know. It'll be good. It'll be good to stay. It's gonna be yeah. good to see. Let's put it this way: either way, it's gonna get the fucking numbers watching, isn't it? That's the main thing. Absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. Copes, yeah. do you have one more? Uh no. Okay. Uh, what's been your go-to quarantine snack? Go-to quarantine snack: oh, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> ben and Jerry's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I can, I can fucking, I can sink tubs of that, you know, literally like two, three tubs in a night. Like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, swear, I just, I, I just look at it and I gain weight, bro. <laughs> oh, bro, look, I don't know how I'm getting to featherweight. You know, like at one point when I used to fight at lightweight, so I, I used to walk around about him. I think in between eight, eight, say eighty five and eighty nine kilos, and yeah. he cut. Cut from like eighty to seventy, you know, lean. And now, now I'm, I'm fighting at featherweight, and I'm sinking tubs of Ben and Jerry's, and I, I very rarely go over seventy six k. You know, what? <laughs> I think it's, it's all like all the hard work, and plus I'm I'm teaching quite a lot now from Monday uh, from morning to night time. So, yeah. you know, say yeah. t- t- ten one on ones in a day. You know, it's like ten. You're a busy workouts. man. Yeah, yeah. And I've all. It's always that thing where people come in, people get a session with you because you're in the UFC and then a lot of the time um, people come in and they just want to, they don't want to learn, they want to train. Um, I had some guy the other month come in to me, where was he from? Romania, it was. Okay. And uh, he, he paid to come in, come in and he um, said, I said, what do you want to do then? What do you want to learn? And he looked at me dead serious and said, me, me and you, we fight. And I was like... <laughs> I said, what? And he's like, me and you, we, we fight. And he pointed to the cage. And like, there was people around, people around and stuff, you know, in the gym. And I thought, <laughs> I don't, I thought, I don't want to, I don't want to look like a bitch. I was like, oh, go ahead, let's go then. Uh, so I jumped in the cage with him. Um, I thought, oh, he's, got, he's got to be fucked or so like this, you know what I mean? But we put gloves on, I thought, he'll probably want a light spa. And the first thing he done was try to do a flying knee to the face. And I was like, whoa. So um, oh. t- two rounds, I just went in on him. And literally by the end of the second round, he, he said, okay, brother, I want to learn. I want to learn. And then that, that was pretty much it. He just, he just settled for technique after that. But yeah. Holy shit. Like, yeah, wow. bro, seriously. Like, that was like, you know, some real shit. Um, it must have looked out. There was people that come up halfway through and they must have thought fucking... But Chris, Chris was battering one of his privates for not <laughs> you know me. But now he come up. I said, I said to me, why, why did you want to fight? And he said, uh, he said to know where I am at. I am crazy. That's what he said. 
Like there was a bit of a wow. language barrier. But, yeah, so that's the shit I'm dealing with sometimes. So yeah, I, I hear you. Know, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> hey Chris, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time for us today and coming on and chatting with us. We're big fans of yours and we can't wait to cheer you on to the title, my man. Any time, any time. If you want to um, get back on me in a couple of weeks as well, um, I'll probably have a little bit, I'll, I'll have a bit of news, a little bit of change. I just don't want to say you're not in here. Just yeah, that's I mean. awesome. We, we'd yeah. love to. We'd love to. Perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. That's and I'll good. hit you up in a couple of weeks, man. And uh, send me those pictures of your leg you were talking about and I'll add them to this file. Oh, nice one, bro. I'll send you them right now. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. See you, see you in a bit, Thank bro. you. Have a good night. Take care. Yeah.